Lord will honor you as you step in in Jesus' mighty name. I welcome those in the prayer rally town and also those who are tuning in this morning. The Lord will honor you as you tune in this morning. It's going to be a glorious three days in the mighty name of Jesus. We give God all the glory for the second prayer conference this very year. Last month, we did a prayer conference to start the Battle of Agilon, which was taken from the book of Luke, uh, from the book of Joshua, chapter 10, verse 13. But before we go into that, I just want to welcome each and everyone as we step in uh, this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. As we log on, as we tune in, the Lord will honor you. My name is Remy Kende Taiwo. I'm prayer rally managing chaplain and also the host for this prayer rally conference, night VG conference. It's always it always takes place the last three days of each month. The last three days of each month. Today is day one of the prayer conference in the month of February two thousand and twenty seven uh, two thousand and seventeen. It's tag the battle of Siklak. I welcome you to Siklak. All the prayer warriors or the valiant men. I welcome those who have been in the stronghold of prayer with us who have taken the Ark of Covenant before the Lord, the Guardian of the Warriors, the Champlains and the Knights. The Lord will honor you as you stay up late tonight together because to, in the next three days, we will wake the dawns together. It's going to be a glorious three days in the presence of the Most High God. I welcome all the valiant men, the women, uh, those in the prayer rally time once again. He, I, like I said, it's going to be very glorious in the next three days as we step into the battlefield of prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. As you know, in prayer rally, we call it battlefield or battle of this. Uh, for the sake of those who are tuning in for the first time, we tag all our prayer conference battle because it's an active word. That as we always say so that everybody will stay awake. It's an act active word for you to challenge and to contend. It's a place where you cannot afford to sleep or to doze off. It's for those who are ready to wake the dawn, the, those who are ready to command the morning, those who are ready to take the darkness and say to the darkness, where it belongs according to the word of God in, in the book of Job 38 verse 12. Those who are ready to challenge and to reshape destiny, those are the people that will wake up and rise up with me tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. They will remain alert, they will remain active in the mighty name of Jesus because they understand the concept of prayer, that when you step into prayer, prayer is like waving a sword because the Bible calls it two edges, so that is the word of God. That when they step into prayer, they step with actively, they are fully alert, they know what they are doing, they know what is about to happen, and they understand Understand what happens in the spiritual realm tonight as we gather I call I have come to you in the name of the Lord God I have come with the host of heavens before the host of heavens today I've come with the host of heaven host of heavens those on the horse the white or the Bible describe it as riding the white horse I have come with the host of heavens tonight as we assemble before the throne of grace I've come with the presence of God I have come with the backup of heavens and the thrones of God I have come in the name of the most high God and the word of God which is active which is life which is power which is spirit in me in the mighty name of Jesus. I, I have come there today. And as we all assemble before the throne before the Bible says that the same may be fulfilled according to the scriptures in Second Chronicles, it says somewhere in Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 13, that all the men of Judea they assemble before the Lord with their little ones, with their family. So also we assemble before the Lord today in this holy convocation that we take three days. It's a, our season is a great season for us. It's our season of re total recovery. It's a season when we recover time. A season where we, the redeemer of time will speak up for us. A season where we recover our dreams and our aspiration. A season, when we will recover all, when I say we will recover lost opportunities, this is our season and that is what the Lord is about to deal with us in the next three days. As we step and as we assemble before the Lord, the battle of sick life, we is a battle, is a very final battle in the life of David. Is the an unprecedented battle, a battle where he was able to recover all that has never happened in history he recovered all everything everything that was such a great spot the bible says that they, they had to share it with 13 cities we will look at that the story in the mighty name of jesus but before we do that let's open this prayer conference and i declare this prayer conference open in the name of the father in the name of the son and the name of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Everyone under my voice, I welcome you once again to your season to a new era. I welcome you to a season of total recovery. I want us to begin to declare that as we step before we even say anything, we just fortify our home, our house with the blood of Jesus. If you can rise up with me, just rise up and walk around a little bit. Someone under my voice, walk around a little bit and fortify everywhere with the blood of Jesus and seal everywhere with the blood of Jesus. 
glorious. Uh, because the next three days uh, is going to be glorious. Uh, begin to seal everywhere. Seal my home, my environment. This place right now, we seal it with the blood of Jesus. Uh, every spirit, every power that is not of God, uh, that is looming around, hanging around. Uh, I charge them out in the name of Jesus uh, and I dispel them in, into the abyss in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, I send them to hell in Jesus' mighty name. I said this place, this altar is an altar before the Lord as we assemble before the Lord. Uh, there is the upon it, the Lord will build his word, he will build his church, he will build his altar and the gate of hell will not prevail upon this place uh, whatever we decree will be established in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, I call down the fire of God from the throne of grace uh, to descend upon every altar everyone who is either kneeling down or rising up, whatever you are doing, whatever you are, wherever you are standing becomes your altar right now wherever you are communicating with God is your altar. I pray that the fire from the throne of grace uh, will hit that altar you will be inspired, you will be charged in the mighty name of Jesus. For the one that will bounce off my mouth, the one that will roll off this mouth, will be full of fire, I pray, and will be full of power in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that somebody under my voice will utter the same word, will be so sure that every word that they will utter tonight, this prayer conference, will not fall, will not fall to the ground, but will be rooted, We stand, will be established in the mighty name of Jesus. It's our season of total recovery. It's our season, your God. It's our season because the Bible says, let the redeem of the Lord say so. It's a time when we will redeem everything and we say so before the Lord. Those who has redeemed from his adversary, from their adversary, we stand together before the throne of grace and we declare once again this conference open. We declare it open in our home. We declare it open in our territory. I said we declare it open in our tent. Whatever you have, if you're hearing me, if you are under my voice, begin to declare that, that this conference the next three days, at least prophesy into it. I, 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 if I were you, I will personalize it. I will see the Lord. I will see the Lord in my home. I will recover all, both in dreams and in life. Things will begin to unfold. Things will come back. All every lost opportunity, everything that I have, that passed by, that I have been missed, everything that I have missed, I will recall tonight in the next three days in the mighty name of Jesus. Because as the Lord has delivered, this is our season, our season of total recovery. Our season when things will be changing is our shifting season. Things will be shifting in our favor in the mighty name of Jesus. I welcome you to prayer rally night video conference. I welcome you to the presence of God. I welcome you to seek like together we are going to explore what is Sigla? Why are we here? We are going to look at the story behind it. Together, daughters of Zion, men of valor, men of valiant men and women. I said, together we will unhorse the horse rider in the next three days. We will unhorse the horse rider in the next three days as we assemble before the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. B begin to declare, begin to make an affirmation begin to declare what you expect to happen in your home in your life somebody under my voice say eh? what do you think will happen as for me begin to say something they see gla whatever has been set on fire hey the devil must pay back with interest in the mighty name of jesus whatever of mine that is burning right now i retrieve it from fire in the mighty name of jesus i said the enemy the fire of the enemy will not burn you somebody under my voice say eh? the enemy will not throw fire in your camp in the mighty name of Jesus. As a result, we fortify. Because there is a fire that leaks water. There is a fire that swallow fire. That I say that it says rod, the rod of Moses. The Bible says swallowed other rod. I call down the fire of God to begin to consume every contrary fire that is not of God, that is burning, that is about to burn, that has burnt in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody under my voice, you need to declare that. I say that fire that has been released, that is not of God, that is burning so much that is burning in the area of career in the area of uh, marriage in the area of job in the area of the in the area of our children whatever it is uh, i call that fire we call it off right now in the mighty name of jesus uh, i said the lord the one that answers by fire the ones whose fire we consume other fire i i send it forth uh, in the mighty name of jesus uh, the one that will go ahead of us tonight uh, as a pillar of cloud uh, i send it forth Yekima, for the psalmist says i set the law before me is at my right hand i will not be moved so we said the lord before us tonight this very morning daughters of zion men of valor villain men and women in the mighty name of jesus as we assemble before the lord in sigla in jesus mighty name 
quickly as we go in please if you have your bible with you if you can open your bible to the book of uh, psalm let's declare it open psalm 24 please somebody turn to psalm 24 it's a good psalm to open a prayer conference to invite the king of glory into our dwelling in the mighty name of jesus please turn with me your bible to the book of psalm in the mighty name of jesus the book of psalm the psalm 21 and 24 in jesus mighty name the health is the lord let's read it together if you are there begin to wave the lord uh, as i at the count of three i will wait and see whether we're all there so the count of three let's read this great psalm the psalm of david the psalm to open this the 25th psalm recorded or the 24th psalm recorded in the bible i'm waiting for people to turn to the book of psalm psalm if you're here there let's read it together psalm of david in the mighty name of jesus i welcome you to the prayer rally life conference as you join in tonight we are turning to psalm 24 psalm 24 the psalm of david as we declare and we invite the king of glory to come in psalm 24 someone under my voice please turn to psalm 24 psalm 24 psalm 24 the earth is the lord and the fullness thereof and all that is within is founded it upon the waters let's begin to go psalm 24 Psalm 2-4 The earth is the Lord and his fullness thereof, the world and those that dwell in it. For he has founded it upon the sea and, and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the ears of the Lord? Uh, or who may stand in his presence in the holy place? He who has a clean heart tonight and, uh, and a clean heart and a, a, a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul to to the idols daughters of zion men of valor and who have not sworn deceitfully he shall receive receive blessing from the lord and the righteousness from the god of his um, salvation this is jacob the generation of those who love you we see who seek your face lift up your heads O ye gate and be thou lifted up you everlasting doors that the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory the lord mighty in battle the lord mighty in battle lift up your heads O you gate and be lifted up your everlasting door that the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory the lord of god is the king of glory let's begin to invite the king of glory into that situation into that home into our lives right now in the mighty name of jesus we invite the king in this gathering in the mighty name of jesus for the bible says unto the lord shall the gathering of his people be we gather before the lord and we invite the king of glory to step into our home into our tent into our midst in the mighty name of jesus we ask the lord to direct this prayer conference right now in jesus mighty mighty name amen once again this is the battle of Ziklag, and the theme is and david recovered all david recovered all that's the overall theme of this conference but day one we're going to look at the word and the, the, the first samuel we will take it from the book of first samuel chapter 30 verse 6 where it says and david encouraged himself in the lord but before we look at how david encouraged himself in the lord we need to look at what happened in Ziklag. why it was he in Ziklag? what Happen in, I mean, what went wrong in Sigla? We will look at that quickly as we identify things in our life. As we know, Sigla is a place, is the south of uh, Judea. Judea, this Sigla uh, belonged actually to the territory of Judah. It belongs to the ter territory of Judah when Joshua was uh, dividing the land. In Joshua chapter 15, when you have time, and verse 31, it was given to the people of Judah. And later it became the territory of the tribes of Simeon they had to share they had to give uh, some of their allotment to Simeon because they were scattered in Israel that was what the, uh, Jacob their father said when he was blessing all of them he said Simeon and uh, the Levites will be scattered in Israel so part of the inheritance of Judah was given to Simeon this place this very place that is Sigla is uh, was inhabited 
by the, the Simeonite. They were given to the Simeonite. But as at the time of the story, as at the time when this happened, he was already uh, 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 he was colonized or taken over by the Philistine. So it was the camp of the Philistine. He was part of them. And how did he get there? After running away, we realized that he's been running. David, the man, uh, after man, God's man, uh, God's heart, he's been running away from his enemy um, uh, Saul and he, he went to Sigla. He went to Sigla. He, he was a place of residence. He requested for it. If I were to shorten the story, he requested for the one. He asked the king. He, he escaped to a place called Gath. Gath is one of the major royal city of the Philistines. And he, he found favor with one of the people there and they accommodated him after about a year four months he requested for a place for him to settle with his family and with the people that were with him altogether there were 600 people with uh, david on this uh, expedition they were with him and that that the saying of the bible might be fulfilled according to the blessing that the, his father blessed the, his, uh, the lineage of judah when you have time in the book of genesis chapter 49 verse 10 the Bible says he blessed Judah and he said unto Judah shall the gathering of his people of his brethren be and the scepter of authority the scepter of royalty would be with Judah so people come to the tribes to the people and to that lineage that was a blessing that was placed upon them he had 600 men we're not talking of the women not talking of their children so there were many there were more than 600 but there were 600 valiant men people who are fit for battle people who can fight people who believe in him people who believe in his leadership they were moving from cave to, uh, from cave to cave from uh, from wilderness to wilderness they were jumping mountains they were going to high places places to offer sacrifice with him they did all that the 600 of them so he decided when you have time it's a fantastic story in the book of first samuel chapter 27 verse 6 he asked to move to to Sigla, and that was accepted. It, Sigla is the south, remember, south of Judea. When you say south, it is the south. The south stands for like the past. South is a place where the devil normally comes through. He comes through the back area of weakness. So it was the south of Sigla. I want you to listen to this as we go on. As this story begins to unravel, we will just look at the story today. We do more of the story, but we pray in between just to establish, to have a good foundation so that by the time we get to day two is going to be glorious because by day two he made an inquiry before the Lord. But this particular story, they find themselves in Sigla. He went to Sigla because of one thing. He went because of Saul. It, let, let's read it. When you have time in First Samuel chapter 27 verse 1, David said in his heart, that was what the Bible says, according to verse 1, he said in his heart that I shall now, he might perish one day in the hands of Saul. So it's better for him to disappear and escape to the land of the Philistine. He went into the land of his enemy. The people he once dismembered, the, the, the Goliath, the, 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 he went back to the land of, may you not go back to your enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody under my voice, situation put David to go back to the land of his enemy for protection, to escape from Saul so that they will stop looking for him. He could not stand in the whole of the land of the uh, Judah or in, in Israel because the kingdom was already divided. There was kingdom of Judea and the kingdom of Israel. He could not stand. He could not hang around anywhere. Saul was looking for him everywhere. He escaped so many things. He decided in his heart, that is what the Bible said, he decided in 1 Samuel chapter 27 verse, uh, verse 1 to leave. He made up his mind to go to the land to live with his enemy to escape from Saul. So he escaped, the Bible said, he escaped with, with 600 people, with their men, with the men, with the wives, with their children, lots of people to feed on the way, lot of armory to take as well. So he must have been rich. Only God knows. But he had that and people believed in him and they followed him and he went. So he made that reckless decision. I don't know whether you have been in that situation. May you not go to the camp of your enemy to look for help. May you not be forced. To, you may you not be homeless. Whatever will make you to to camp around your enemy out of desperation. I pray somebody under my voice. You need to pray that out. That may that not happen to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Because it happened to this great man. It happened to a man that was anointed, anointed to be a king in Israel. But when trouble 
came, when he could not stand it, when the heat was too much, he was tired of running, he needed rest. So that was the only time he managed to have rest. Well, for a year and four months, the Bible said he stayed among them. He, in fact, he wrote some uh, psalms when he was there. He bought some instrument, there's some psalm that he wrote with the instrument from Gat. They call it the Gatite instrument he used to play. You remember God in this journey throughout. I don't know whether whatever you are going through, but it went and that was the beginning how he got to Siglag. He went to stay with his enemy. He, I don't know whether you have find yourself in that situation out of hunger, out of no jobs, out of desperation, out of being homeless. He went back. I don't know whether you are back. I don't know why you are in Sigla. He went because he needed to escape from Saul. He was uh, running away from one enemy and he went to the camp of another enemy. Can you imagine? He had to go all the way. So he was in Sigla for that purpose and he could go put himself in a terrible situation. I don't know what position you are in. I don't know how long, but I want somebody to wake up their spiritual antenna that today, whatever is driving or whatever has driven you to Sigla, let that thing return, turn back in the mighty name of Jesus. So you, I say to someone under my voice, I say stop running. Stop running from yourself. Stop running from situation. Stop running from people. Stop running from circumstances. Face that challenge face it he couldn't face that is all anymore he had to run for his life and he made this one i wouldn't call it a mistake but it was one battle it was the last of all battle it was the last one but he had 14 months 14 good months a year and four months that is 16 months altogether to relax so he escaped into the land and we realized that after that he had he escaped, he lived among them. But he was cunning. He was doing some stuff. He was killing. He was doing some, but he was hiding from whosoever allowed him. The ashes, the king that allowed him. They trusted him, but he was very smart. He started doing some dubious things, killing and, you know, taking over territory unknowingly to them. But he kept them away from this man so that he can dwell there in safety then in chapter 28 you will see that samuel the bible says samuel died samuel had died in Sam. so there was no one for david to run to no no prophet to call on to samuel died the israel mourned. saul also had put all the medium he had told them he had driven them out of the land the there was a war the philistines are about to attack israel they were about to attack them they gathered they want to attract and that was one battle that Saul went to and died that happened while david was in in um in siglak he was in siglak he was among the enemy and he wanted to go on that battle with them but it was turned and thank God for rejection. He was turned back. They turned him back. They said, we don't want him because he can deceive. And I know for sure that he can turn around. He that cannot touch the, the he can lay, they can refuse to lay his hand on the anointed of God. I know for sure that when he gets to that battle, he, there is no way he will be able to fight with Saul. But then he was turned back. The enemy said, no way. The lords of the Philistine, they turned him back. They said, he cannot come with us. We don't trust him. When you have time, when you read it in First Samuel chapter 28, he was turned back. He cannot go with us. So he came back. He was disappointed. Thank God for that disappointment. Thank God that they turned him back. First, would he betray his own people? I doubt it. He would have changed on the battlefield. I know him. There is no way we look and watch the army of the, the old circumcised Philistine to destroy the army of the living God. No way. He was turned back and he was rejected. So he came back. Even though he begged, he pushed to go for this battle, to, to go, but he was turned back. Thank God for this uh, disappointment. So in short, he came and the Bible says, and that's where we are, which we'll quickly look at. The Bible says, and he came to Siglag on the third day. I'm just doing this quick recap for the sake of those who haven't read it, for the sake of those who are quite new in the Christian work. They came on the very third day. I want you to remember. And when David, in First Samuel chapter 30 verse 1. The Bible says, if you can turn your Bible to that, it says, when David and his men came to Siglag, 
they came on the third day. Why the third day? There's something about the third day. It's a different teaching. It's going to it's quite deep. But you will notice third day in everything. It happens. It's, it, it signifies resurrection power. Things always happen on the third day. That is the the, the rounding up of battle. The, on the third day, the Bible says he came back. He got back to the camp on the third day. Thank God he came back on the third day. Before he got back, the Amalekites, the backstabber, they knew he wasn't around. They came behind him and they came to raid Siglag because they knew David had gone out to war. They came and they took everyone. They took the men and the women. They came on the third day. That day was the worst day of David's life. It was the worst day but the best on God's calendar. It was all something that happened because all some things always happen throughout the, God's, uh, throughout the Bible on the third day. David believed his steps was ordered by God, divine time. He had he came back. Thank God that they turned him back. Thank God they turned you back. Thank God the, the, of the, for that disappointment. He came back the third day. Otherwise, he wouldn't have seen it. His house, his home, everywhere was on fire. 600 men, 600 homes, family homes, more than a settlement, more than a borough. 600, they were set on fire. They took everything. They walked in at that time. The, the children had already disappeared. I don't know what of yours is on fire. But tonight, for the next three days, we will recover all in the mighty name of Jesus. When men slept, the Bible says, the enemy came and, and planted wheat, wheat among the wheat. When men slept, when men slept, when David turned, when David left, the enemy came. They, they came through the, to Siglak, the south, to the areas of weakness. They came through the past. They came through, the, maybe probably they are using your past, your past behavior, your past history. They came. They, people can use past against one. They came through the back. Whatever is, uh, you have turned your back to is yourself. Whatever you have left in the past is yourself. You need to pray. Somebody under my voice uh, as we proceed along this story. You need to pray. I remember the word of Isaiah the prophet, the prophet of old. In, in Isaiah 43 verse 6, he said, I say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not hold back. Everything that is holding back, everything that the south is holding back, everything that history is holding back, for someone under my voice, begin to pray. Come back, Yekima. Do not hold back is a command. Do not hold back in the mighty name of Jesus. So they head back. They hold back. They, they took their children, they took their wives, they took everything. I don't know whether the enemy, through carelessness, maybe they've taken the job. Maybe restructure has come. Maybe you have been expelled from work. Probably somebody under my voice, the enemy struck through the carelessness. Maybe the children, maybe they are now misbehaving. They came through the south. But tonight, Yekima, somebody under my voice, whatever has come through the south, in my life, begin to say it. I will recover all in the mighty name of Jesus. I say to the south, I say, hear, hear the word of the Lord. I say, Yeke, Marco Sutro, give up, Yeke, Ma. It is a command. Whatever has been taken in your camp, in your life, in your tent, in your territory, I say, I, I decree that you will get it back in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Begin to release the word of God. Whatever of yours that has been taken must be must be redeemed tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. So the Bible says, they turn the, when you get to verse 3 of four Samuel chapter 3, and when David and his men came to the city, the Bible said they found it was burning with fire. The wives, the children, they have all been taken captive. They have all been taken captive. Everything burning, jobs, everything gone, security, home, the mortgage, repossession, everything gone. I don't know whether that is your story. That means Sigla is on fire. May your home not be on fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Is that dream on fire? Is opportunity on fire? Is aspiration? Have they torn it apart? Have you lost hope? No more, no, no more expectation. Have they destroyed every spirit of disappointment? Everything that has set your, your dreams on fire. Tonight, I say daughters of Zion, men of valor, valiant men, we will recover all in the mighty name of Jesus. That is the promise of God for the next three days because that is the season is a season of recovery. We will recover all in the mighty name of Jesus. A season to recover. A new dawn. Turn one under my voice in the mighty name of Jesus. They, they stole. They took everything away. Ah, Everything that is in captivity, somebody under my voice must be released 
in the mighty name of Jesus. So the Bible says in verse 4 of the 1 Samuel chapter 30, the story that we're reading, I'm just doing a run up to before we get to the main thing. The run up, and he said, when he gets to verse 4, and that David and the people were with him, they raised their voices, they wept, they wept until there was no more strength in them. Villant men mighty warriors people who, whose face the bible says they were like lion they swift on the mountain they can kill a thousand at a time those men wept they were broken because the core of their life the were the have been taken away had been taken away they wept i'm talking about men who can throw arrows with both hands men that the bible described they are not double hearted they are good they can step into battle with everything men these men were crying they cry like baby they wept sore they took all great men weeping whatever is making you to weep Sometimes we don't, it's not a physical weapon. So there are some tears in the heart. There are some things that, that cripple someone. There, there are some things that bang someone's hand. They were weeping. They wept. Great men. They wept. The houses, everything destroyed. Except whatever was on them. And including David's wife. That was what the Bible says. The two wives were taken away. David himself in verse 6, which is where I'm going, was greatly distressed. Somebody under my voice, if you are distressed, I say you will recover all in the mighty name of Jesus in this season. Say amen, somebody, in Jesus' mighty name. And the, the Bible says, and these people spoke of stoning him as if it's a, they spoke of stoning him. That is their habit in Israel. The Jews, they are very quick to, snow, to, to stone, just as they always do. They stoned Jesus Christ. Several times John said in the book of John chapter 10, he said they were about to stone him again. Not the first time. They like stoning. Every little thing they've raised their stone. Every little thing. So also are we. Because we all stone. We stone people. We stone when we judge. We stone when we complain. We stone when we murmur. They, we, they were ready to stone. They were throwing words. They were throwing. They were angry. They were ready to kill him. Can you see? You caused this. We've been following this man. Look at our our life why must we fight they were upset and the bible says this is where i'm going and david encouraged himself in the lord david encouraged himself in the lord whatever is turning you somebody under my voice begin to pray whosoever is throwing stone maybe blame maybe complain maybe judging you let the lord silence search and stop the stoning in the mighty name of jesus i speak to every stone that has been thrown at us oh god we stop it we call an end to it i say no more stoning somebody needs to say that prayer whatever the enemy is stoning at you if he's stoning into your home stone into your character stone into your life somebody under my voice begin to decree that enough is enough and no more stoning no more blaming maybe you are even stoning yourself maybe you have been blaming yourself you begin to say ah we stop this i stop this right now both in the spiritual realm and the physical i said no more stoning they will not stone my destiny they will not stone my life they will not stone me they will not stone my children somebody under my voice you will not be stoned in the mighty name of Jesus. your dreams will not be stoned your aspiration will not be stoned you will not be killed off in the mighty name of jesus in Jesus' mighty name, you will not be blamed. Every blaming spirit, I come against it. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Somebody under my voice. Uh, and whatever is bitter. The people were bitter against David. Uh, whosoever is bitter. Every bitter voice. Uh, every distressed voice. Uh, that is speaking over your destiny. That is speaking over your life. Uh, that is speaking over my life. Uh, begin to personalize it. Uh, I silence such voices. Uh, I silence such bitterness. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, begin to use the word of God. Uh, the countenance of God. Uh, the Bible says and the psalmist says. Uh, in Psalm 4 verse 6. Uh, it said we ask who shall do us good. But thou O Lord. Uh, you put your countenance upon us begin to ask for the countenance of God the favor of God the joy of the Lord if we do you good they begin to ask for it every bitterness around you around about you ye personalize it around about me I come against it right now in the mighty name of Jesus every voice that is embittered I come against it in the mighty name of Jesus I ask for the favor of God for the countenance of God to be upon me begin to pray that begin to personalize that to be upon you mention your name I 
me. Remy Kendi Taiwo. I say the favor of God will be upon me. The countenance of God will be upon me and my children and my household. Upon my husband, upon my tent. Upon your wives, begin to say. Begin to declare it. In the mighty name of Jesus. In this season. In this very season. Bitterness will not find a place in me. Somebody needs to say that. The Bible says, and Jesus said in the book of John 14, 31, 30. He said, the devil came. He found nothing in me. Bitterness will not be found in my dwelling. Somebody needs to say. No bitterness towards me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whenever bitterness wants to show up, I speak. I say, favor begin to speak. Big favor of God. The countenance of God. Let it counteract every form of bitterness. Somebody under my voice. Pray, 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 pray. Don't do suffer. Let the favor of God counter every bitterness. Somebody under my voice. In the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. The scriptures goes on. And he said, David encouraged himself in the Lord. That is what I want us to look. How can he encourage himself? How are you encouraged right now? Another version, another verse says, David uh, uh, strengthened himself in the Lord. There is the difference between to be strengthened and to encourage. I want us to know the difference. That there is one thing to encourage. Another thing is to be strengthened. Different version, NIV version, all other versions talk of strengthen himself. When you strengthen yourself, it is a different act. When you strengthen yourself, you might empower, you look for more people around you. You fortified it. You practice. Maybe you do a bit of gymnastic. You do, do a bit of exercise. You get yourself ready for violent men and women. Maybe you practice more. But they said he strengthened himself. Maybe you look for techniques. So what's going to happen? You start strategizing. You start looking at how do you go by battle strategy. How? But the Bible says he strengthened himself. But the version that we're using tonight is the King James version, the heavenly version. I love it because of the Tao and the, they are real. They become so powerful. He says he encouraged himself. Let's do, to encourage yourself. What does it mean? He make himself to feel confident. He, he, he inspire himself with courage. That is encouragement. When you inspire confidence, when you support yourself, when you say to yourself, no matter what, but how do you encourage yourself? How can somebody encourage yourself? How will David have done this in this crisis? And I'm speaking to someone. How do you encourage yourself? The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, David encouraged himself in the Lord. We will go, we will talk, we will pray. How did he do that? Perhaps I started wondering. Maybe he was remembering the word of the Lord, the promises of the Lord. He encouraged himself. He remembered that to inspire confidence. He maybe he remembered Psalm 105, the one that he wrote in the days. In the days of battle, Psalm 105, verse 8, he said he remembered his covenant, the promise that he made to a thousand generations. Probably he remembered the psalm that he wrote in Psalm 104, Psalm 140, verse 7. Psalm 140, verse 7. He covered my head in the days of battle. But the Bible says he encouraged himself. I don't know what word. I don't know what is it that you can remember in the Bible. I don't know what you can remember. But if you can remember his promises, like the song goes, it said, When I remember his promises, I shout hallelujah. When I remember his promises, I shout, Hallelujah, 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 oh, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, oh. When I remember his promises, I shout, Hallelujah. Maybe you remember his promises. I don't know what you can remember. Can you remember the promises of God? Those dreams, those things that he has said, the word, at least one word, if you will not believe all the thousand promises, at least one, 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 hold on to that. You remember that. He must have remembered remembered all those uh, that he wrote in the days of battle. You remember the psalm. I remember the psalm 105 maybe verse 42. He said for he remembered his holy word with Abraham his servant. Probably he meditated on that. I don't know if somebody can meditate on that. But David must have meditated on something. He must have remembered the promises of God. Or is it the one that he said in Psalm 112 one verse 2. In Psalm 112 verse 2. He said he has given food to those who fear him. He will remember his covenant forever. Maybe he reassured himself in those words. I'm speaking to someone under my voice. That is the word of the Lord. He encouraged himself by remembering his promises. Maybe he was just going through all the Israel writing the journal, the journaling, all the things that he has done, the journals that he is written.
the articles, the dreams, the diary. I don't know what you are keeping, but he must have remembered something. He remember the promises because he is a man of pen. He put things to the down. He is a man of writing. He is a man that writes notes. He is a man of letters. He loved to write. He maybe he remembers Psalm 103. I don't know whether you can remember that too. Verse 17. He says, but the loving kindness of God is forever. It's everlasting to everlasting. To those who fear him and his righteousness to his children's children. Probably that came to mind. Maybe the word of Moses that he said in the desert. Maybe the five Torah came to me. I was just wondering. Maybe Deuteronomy 7 9. Oh God, he said therefore the Lord your God he is God. He is faithful a thousand generations with those faithful to a thousand generations with those who love him. He keep his commandment. Perhaps he remember that. Or maybe he also look back into some of his psalms. Probably he looked at Psalm 40 again. 40 verse 1. I say, this one he gave to the chief musician. A psalm of David, the Bible says, he, he, I wait patiently, he said. I wait patiently for the Lord. He inclined unto my ears. He heard my cry. He remembered those moments. Maybe, maybe, what can you remember? I challenge someone under my voice. David encouraged himself with things that he has written, with things that he penned, with things that he remembered, with things that he had, he had record. He, came out, he encouraged himself. Probably, probably I was just wondering, maybe he encouraged himself looking at the faithfulness of God in his life, in the time past. Can you remember the good things that the Lord has done in the time past? What can you remember? For David, what I could imagine, probably he remember I survived the case of the cave of Adolam. When he penned Psalm 147 and Psalm 57. Maybe remember the time when he wake up the dawn and say, I will wake up the dawn. Probably he remember that. He remember the days that he had to live with the white animals in the cave and with the white people whose mouth is they are like sword. That was what the Bible says in those Psalms. Probably he remembered that. I don't know what you can remember. But David encouraged himself. And I want to chat someone under my voice. That tonight we just build the foundation of encouragement. Probably he remembered that. Maybe he remembered the years he was running away from Abimelech. The Bible says that he wrote a psalm. He maybe remembered the days of hunger. When he was eating. When he had to eat holy bread. And deny himself of sleeping with his wife. When he ever on a mission. He, he maybe he remembered that. And say God was so faithful. What can you remember? Can you remember the days that he saved that head in the days of battle? David remember all that. He remember the faithfulness of God in the time past. No wonder a song is coming through to my spirit. He said, Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. All I ever needed, your, your hands have provided. You are new every day, every morning. Everything that I ever needed, your hands have provided. Great is your faithfulness unto me, O God. If you can't remember something, can you remember that song, somebody under my voice? The greatness of God, the faithfulness of God. David remembered that. And he encouraged himself. I said, be encouraged. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Let your spirit be encouraged. I speak to someone under my voice. I said, be encouraged. Maybe he remembered so many things. The days of running. He remembered the days when he said, he set my feet upon the high places. He makes my feet like a feet of a deer. I, he has become someone jumping one after the other upon the high places looking. Upon the great heights. Running. Maybe he remembered those days. Maybe he remembered those times. But he encouraged himself. Probably he was provoked. That's another way to encourage. Even there was only hunger. It's tearing in him. How can the devil take that away? 10 years of your life. 20 years of your life. You have sacrificed in that home. You have put everything. And you want to let go. You have been in that job. How can they take it away? You have been saving. And yet nothing to show for it. You have labored over those children. How can the devil take that away? I challenge someone under my voice. I say, rise. There was only anger in David. Maybe you have that only anger. How can the devil take that away? Take years of running. Years of moving from cave to cave. Years. 
years of prayer and fasting. Yes, and you want to give up? David encouraged himself. No way. No way. I speak to someone. No way. You can't give up. You can't give up on that dream. You cannot give up on that expression. You can't give up. It's not too late. You are not too old. You can't do it. You can't give up. People are doing it at 65. They are doing it at 85. You can't do it. Joshua was able to take the hills at 85. You can't do it. You can build that home. You can't drive that car. You can't do it. Do not give up. David encouraged himself. He was probably provoked. And I provoked someone to action that you can't give up. In the mighty name of Jesus. I just want to speak tonight. I want to speak to someone. I say perhaps David went through the scriptures again and record. Probably he's been reading. He must have read the book of Torah. He must have read the five books of Moses. Probably remember the writing of Moses. The one that he wrote in the days of Numbers. In the times of the wilderness. The one that he wrote in Numbers 23, 19. I challenge you. Maybe you can remember that. That God is not a man that he should lie. Not that the son of man that he should repent. If we say we do it, somebody needs to say it. He will surely do it. He will make it good. I speak to someone. Use that as a rod. Hold on to that word. I encourage yourself. That I... He is not a man that should lie. He will not lie to me. Neither the son of man that should repent. Whatever he said he will do. For that what, whatever he has spoken, he will do it. Probably he remember that. I don't know what you can remember. Or maybe he remember the days of Jeremiah. Or the lamentation of Jeremiah. In the book of Lamentation 3, 22 to 23. When he said the Lord in kindness of God is indeed, indeed never cease. His compassion never fails. They had new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Oh God, probably you remember that. Or did he get back to the book of Moses and look at the Tarome again and was wondering that what Moses said in the Tarome 32 32.4. Did Moses said something? He said the rock, his work is perfect. For all his way are just a God of faithfulness. Without injustice, righteousness and upright is he. Probably you remember that. What can you remember? The word of your pastors. The sermon that you've had. What can you remember? Hold on to them. Speak them out. Speak. Be inspired. Challenge yourself. Stir up your soul. The devil will not take your dwelling. It will not take your home. It will not take your children. It will not take your dream. You are not, it will not take anything away from you. So under my voice. What can you remember? Probably look at Joshua, the book of Joshua. He remember the time of Joshua and the record that Joshua kept. 23 chapters in all. Being the Joshua 21. Probably remember that. Verse 45. There was one thing Joshua said. That none of his good promises, which the Lord had made to the house of Israel, failed. All came to pass. Maybe that was one word. He remembered that. And he encouraged himself. If I were you, I will rise up. And I will say to myself, none of the good promises that the Lord made to the house of Israel failed. All came to pass. I will personalize it. According to the word of God, in Joshua 21 verse 45, none of the good promises, which the Lord had made to my house, to the house of Kende Taiwo, to the house of Remi Kende Taiwo, to my lineage, we failed. Because all will come to pass. Somebody needs to say that. Somebody needs to pray that prayer. I say, according to the word of God, I repeat and I say to you, I said to all the good promises that the Lord has made, had made to the house of Israel, to the, my house, to my lineage, to somebody under my voice, all will come to pass. The Bible said they all came to pass. So they will come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Maybe you remember that. Probably he went through and saw Joshua 23, verse 15. And he wondered, he, the word that was written, he says, now behold, hey, today, today, I am going the way of all the earth. You know in all your heart and in all your soul that no one, one word of all the good word which the Lord, your God spoke to you concerning you failed. All have been fulfilled for you. Not one of them has failed. The last word, the last testament of Joshua at the point of death. He told them that it was written. It was recorded. Probably he encouraged himself in that. I don't know whether you are encouraged. Maybe the word of Joshua came to him. I don't know what the word is coming through. Probably he went through all the journals, the Psalms, the great events, all the things that he composed in the days, the writing, 
the lyrics, because Psalm is a lyrical poem, the ones that he put together, the ones that he wrote in different notes, maybe it was just flashing through, remembering the, the promises of God. 73 Psalms in all that he wrote. 55, they were full, they were to the chief musician for recording Israel. They were special. He put Sila in between his psalm. He said, for, for whosoever is going to read this, for whosoever is going to sing this, pause here and think. This, there is an interlude. I need you to meditate. Something great happened here. And he, call, he put Sila there. Maybe you remember that. Probably you remember all the maskil. They call them the maskil of David. 13 all in, to, in total. 13 of that. Masterpieces that must never be forgotten in Israel. Because they carry so much story. Maybe remember that. Maybe it was just going through. I am going through those with you. Maybe it was just going through. Maybe, I don't know what you have written. But David encouraged himself. He looked at those, the handwriting, what he has put together, the testimony, what he has said to people. The times you have come out in the church and say, may the Lord remember in the mighty name of Jesus. Probably you remember that which you wrote the Psalm 34. In the days when he was running away from Abimelech, the Bible says, uh, he wrote that one. He cannot forget. He said, taste and say the Lord is good. That was how he titled it. I, he remember that many of the affliction of the righteous. He delivered them all. This very moment, David, a uh, David in the house needs to remember that. David did under my voice. The David did and the David rest. The David and the David rest under my voice. The house of Judah under my voice. I said you need to remember that. That this same God delivered him from the hand of the Amalek. Abimelech. And he wrote this great psalm. The Bible says he wrote it. The psalm that he wrote. Psalm 34. He said taste the Lord is good. The angel of God and camp around those who fear him. He said that in verse, 30, verse 7 of 34. He said it. And he said it also in verse 15. The eyes of the Lord, they are towards the house, the righteous, and the ears towards the cry. Psalm 34, verse 15. I say to someone under my voice, the eyes of the Lord as you pray is towards the righteous. And this year we hear to your cry in the mighty name of Jesus. David must have encouraged himself in so many things. Maybe you remember the time he ran away from Saul. That he was running. The Bible says he was running because Saul wanted to kill him. He escaped. His wife allowed him to escape. And he penned a psalm that he will never forget when you have time. Psalm 59. He remembered that. He encouraged himself. A psalm of David. In fact, this one, he wrote it specially. He said when he escaped, not to be destroyed. This psalm must not be destroyed was a time he wrote when he escaped from the house the very first time he started running in his life psalm 59 the very first time he started running david wanted to kill him micah the daughter allowed him to escape he will never forget that maybe when you have time you can read through that psalm 59 he wrote that he remembered the lord he said god he remember he encouraged himself he said you are my strength in verse 9 of Psalm 59, the Lord is my strength. I wait for you to rescue me. For God, oh God, you are my first stress. The beginning of running. He remember that. His unfailing love. He said in verse 10, God will stand with me. Somebody needs to say that. We, they, they, rise up and say. Verse 59, Psalm 59, verse 10. He said his unfailing love. He, this, my God, will stand with me. Encourage yourself. Rise up. In this season, I will recover all. I don't know about you. I must recover all. Someone under my voice. That was what he said. He said, the Lord will destroy them, all my enemies in hunger. He will destroy them, will smitten them. He wrote all that in Psalm 59. When you have time, time will not permit me to do all that. Psalm 56, what would you say? Probably remember that too. It was a psalm that he wrote when he was running away. Another run. And when he went to, when he ran away from Saul and went to King Ash. That was what brought him to Gath in the very first place. They nearly killed him before they allowed him to set to down. He wrote a psalm that history will not forget. This to the chief director, to the musician for the record in Israel. This one, he made a specific instruction. You play it to the tune of a distant oak. Of a distant oak. He said, This one is very special. Maybe you remember that. He said, It starts with verse 1 of Psalm 56. Say, Have mercy on me, O God. Somebody needs to pray. 
as we are rounding up. Have mercy on me, O oh God. For the AK, he said, people are hounding me. Somebody needs to scream. You must encourage yourself. Have mercy on me, O oh God. I'm constantly hounded by those who slander me. He said, have mercy upon me, O oh God. That was the beginning of that psalm. He prayed unto God. He prayed. He said, my, when my enemy will entreat, I will call on you for help. For I know you are my sight. Somebody needs to say that. Verse 56. Chapter 56. Verse 9. When enemy entreats, and you will call upon this God. He will be on your side. He, David encouraged himself in those great handwriting, those great events, those great records that he managed to keep. Those great things. When he was running, running away from so many people, he wrote so many things. When Edomites, don't give the Edomites, tell, told Saul about his hiding, he wrote another one, Psalm 52, when you have time. He said, why do people boast? He wrote, and he remember all those moments. I charge someone tonight, remember those moments of God's faithfulness. Remember those times of great testimony. I said, encourage yourself with this word. So I charge you before the throne of grace tonight. Villant men and women who are hearing my voice. As we continue this prayer conference, the return of the warrior. Tomorrow, it will be marathon. It will be fast and fear. We've laid the foundation today. We have looked at it. He encouraged himself. And I charged someone under my voice. I said, be encouraged. Go in this new might. Go with that memory. Remember the good times. Remember the faithfulness of God. Remember his word which he has spoken. In the days of battle, remember the times I saved you. Remember those dreams. Remember his promises. Remember those events. I say encourage yourself. I say be encouraged. I leave you with the word of Sam. I leave you with the word of David. I leave you with the word of the warrior. I leave you tonight, Yeke Moko Sonchorosha, Villant men and women. I leave you with this word as you turn your Bible with me. I leave you with, I charge you to rise up. I leave you with, I charge you in the order of the Psalm of 27, the Psalm of David that he wrote. I said, The Lord is my light and my salvation, of whom shall you fear? I said, The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Yeke Moko, so you need to rise up. And recover all. I charge you, I said, when evil doers, according to his word in verse 2, are still to eat up my flesh, they are drastic, they fall, they will fall and they will fumble. They will stumble and they will fall. Though an army encamp against me, he says, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, I will be confident. I speak to someone. That is the word for you. One thing I've asked of the Lord, that I seek after, that I dwell in the house of the Lord in the days of my life. I will dwell in the days of my life. In dwell to dwell is to live in peace in his presence and not to depart. I charge someone under my voice. Uh, I say you will gaze upon the beat of the house of the Lord. You will have peace on every side. The glory of God will not depart in your home. It will not depart in your life. I charge someone under my voice. I call you to Psalm 27. I said it will hide you in his shelter. In the days of trouble, that was what he said in verse 5 of 27. I said, this great God, this God I call, the God of all flesh, we hide you in the days of trouble, in, in, in his shelter, in the mighty name of Jesus. He will conceal you under the cover of his tent. He will lift you high upon the rock. In the mighty name of Jesus, I say to someone in verse 6, I say, now your head will be lifted and all your enemies around you, yet it will be lifted above them. In the mighty name of Jesus, I said to someone that the Lord will hear you according to the word of God in verse 7 of Psalm 27. Verse 7. He said, Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. May the Lord hear you. Somebody under my voice, I say, as you say, Amen. May the Lord hear you in this the next three days. We will recover all. May as you seek his face, may the Lord hear you. For it is written, you have said to me, that was what he said in verse 8, that seek my face. And tonight, daughters of Zion, men of valor, valiant men and women, tonight, according to that scriptures, Psalm 27 verse 8, he said to me, he said, you have said, seek my face. And I said to someone, and my heart says to him, and my heart says to someone, your face, O Lord God, do we seek 
your face we have come to seek. May you find the Lord. Hide not your face from us. Verse 9. Turn not your servant away in anger. Oh God, I speak to someone. I speak to the heavens. I say, may the Lord not turn his way, his face away from you, from any of us, in the mighty name of Jesus. I said, he has been your help. He said, he has been my help. Cast me not off. Forget me not. Yet came out. The Spirit of God can cast he can throw a one off balance. But I pray tonight, as we round up this prayer conference, that it will not cast you. Away, the Lord will not cast you. Someone under my voice, may you not be cast away. He will not cast you. Neither will he forsake you. He said, cast me not away. Scream in your spirit. Say, God, cast me not away. Oh God of my salvation, I must recover all. The lost dreams, the opportunity, the aspiration, the time. I call for the redeemer of time. To redeem time for everyone under my voice. To redeem the host opportunity. And I say be encouraged. For the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 6. And David encouraged himself. May you be encouraged. May it be written concerning you. May it be said that one day in history. That you rose one night and you encouraged yourself. May you remain encouraged. May you be inspired. May the fire of God begin to burn in your bone. May there be fire upon your altar. May the Lord hear your voice tonight. May you not may, may he hear you. May the Lord may you see the face of the Lord. May the God of heavens hear your voice. May the King save you. May the Lord hear you in the days of trouble. In Jesus' mighty name. I welcome you once again to Siglak. It shall be glorious the next three days. We will assemble, we will continue to assemble and occupy Siglak until we recover all from the Amalekite. The backstabber, the people that fight from the back, the devil that comes to seal and destroy, we must recover all. I leave you with a song. I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what is stole for me. Took back what is stole for me. Took back what is stole for me. I went to the enemy's camp. I pray that you will take all, you will recover all. It shall be your season of great spoil. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once again, this is Prayer Rally Night Vigil Conference. My name is Remy Kendi Taiwo, the host of the Night Vigil. And this we are coming to the end of the Battle of Sigla, Part 1, the Foundation. We will proceed and we shall return. We will return with our sword. We will return with our shield. We will return, we will, uh, seriously encourage we will return, we are defiant, we are determined, we are decisive. We will return gracefully, unruffled. We will return to take over. We will recover all in the name of Jesus. It's a great season. I welcome you once again. The Lord will honor you as you assemble before him in Jesus' mighty name. So we'll continue this prayer conference tomorrow. Same time, 00 hour, UK winter time. The Lord will honor you. He will make his face to shine upon you. I say hello to everyone in the prayer rally time and to everyone that tune in. The Lord will honor you in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen. Once again, this is Prayer Rally Night Video Conference. This is PRZ FM 109.2. Broadcasting live from the studio is Remy Kende Tower. God bless you. Remain graceful and unruffled in Jesus' name.